Hello everyone. Welcome back to chemistry class. Today's topic of discussion will be dual nature of electrons and Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Now, while discussing Bohr's atomic model, we have come to the conclusion that there were certain disadvantages of Bohr's model. Though Bohr's model derived very important results like energy, radius, frequency, time, velocity, number of waves, etc. for an electron and what is the energy required for excitation and what is the energy released during the excitation process and what is the line spectra of high atomic spectrum all this information were given by Bohr's theory but apart from this Bohr's theory couldn't explain the wave nature of electrons and Bohr's theory were not in agreement with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle now in earlier lectures we have find that light shows dual property that is wave nature as well as the particle nature now if light shows dual property then why cannot the other matter all the existing matter should also show dual nature reasoning on this B. Broglie reasoned that electrons similar to that of photons or light will have to show dual nature that is wave nature as well as the particle nature. So if these electrons behave like wave nature, so it must possess the wavelength. So basically the problem here is if an electron is moving in and inside an atom with certain velocity, it should have some momentum. So based on this, what should be the wave length of the electrons? So coming to the dual nature, so dual nature says particle nature and the wave nature. Particle and the wave nature. So, if the system possesses particle and wave nature, then we say this is having a dual property or dual characteristics. Now, we have proved the particle nature in Bohr's theory. Bohr's theory was basically based on this particle nature of electrons, totally ignoring the wave concept of electrons. Because of this ignorance of wave nature, there were certain disadvantages or demerits in the Bohr's theory. Now, B. Broglie is a new name of scientists who reason that these electrons should also have dual property. So, according to this D. Broglie, electron shows wave nature as well as particles. Electrons are also possess dual nature. So, if electron is possessing dual nature, so if an electron moving around the nucleus with certain velocity should also have some wavelength. Then, according to this, the D Broglie wavelength. Lambda let's derive it this way. We have particle nature. So particle nature says energy is equal to M C square Einstein's equation.
what is the energy? M is the mass of substance or a particle, C is the velocity square. So, wave nature, let us be E1, this is E2, according to Planck's quantum theory, this is equals to H mu or Hc by lambda. So, we have wave nature from Planck's equation. <coughs> now, since these are the energies of the same substance, same matter. Then what should be added here? From dual nature, this E1 should be equal to E2, meaning thereby Mc square should be equal to Hc by lambda. So C, C will cancel out. So this comes out to be lambda, the wavelength process by the particle is equal to h by m c. So generalized form is h lambda is equal to h by m v, where v is the velocity. For this photon, we have the c to be the velocity of light. Generalized form V is the velocity of the particle. So, you dual property. So, this is also equals to H by P, where P is the linear momentum. And this is mass of particle. V is the velocity with which the particle is moving. P, which is equals to mass into velocity, this is linear momentum. So, if you look at it, this is a very important relationship which we are going to use often. So, this wavelength, this Lambda, this is known as D Broglie wavelength. D Broglie wavelength. So, for electron, for electron, the D Broglie wavelength of electron is equal to h by m t mass of electron and this is velocity of electron in a particular orbit in which it is moving. That means for any subatomic particles moving with some velocity, the wavelength associated is lambda is equal to h by m v where h is the Planck's constant m is the mass of electron, v is the velocity of the particle. So, for electron, this will be the mass of the electron. This is the velocity of electron and this wavelength will be the wavelength associated with electron. Now, look at this. When we are using the term, any particle, moving particle, should possess dual nature. That means, if I am moving with certain velocity then also some wavelength is associated with me but the problem is for a bigger particle the wavelength is extremely small so it becomes insignificant whereas for subatomic particles very small mass the wavelength associated becomes significant that can be easily observed so this d broccoli wavelength is normally used for subatomic particles whose mass is very small and hence the wavelength becomes significant. So let this be equation for 
bigger mass or bigger mass wavelength is extremely small and is insignificant four subatomic particles with with very small mass the wavelength becomes significant and can be observed easily so can be observed or can be measured easily so whenever we talk about deep bubbles well then but it means every moving particle whether this is a small particle or a big particle every moving particle is always associated with a wave and the wavelength of that particle will be given by this equation that is known as de broglie's equation but the wavelength of the bigger particle becomes very very small which becomes insignificant and very difficult to detect so this is the reason when i am moving or when we are driving or when we are playing football the wavelength becomes insignificant which cannot be observed easily but for subatomic particles any mass is very small mass the wavelength becomes significant and can be easily detected So the following case is wavelength is inversely related to mass. If the mass increases, wavelength becomes insignificant decreases. If the mass decreases, wavelength becomes increases. So this is the Broglie's equation. Lambda is equal to x by n v. Now let's see some modifications of or some other forms of this equation. Let E be the kinetic energy of electron. Let E be the kinetic energy of electron with mass m and velocity b. Then from the definition of kinetic energy, so kinetic energy which is equal to E is equal to Half m v square. So therefore, look at this. M v square is equal to two times kinetic energy. Mass into velocity is equal to two times kinetic energy. Now multiply this equation by m, both sides. Now we multiply this by mass of electron. We are multiplying both sides of this equation by mass of electron so this becomes mass into velocity square 2 m t 2 times mass into kinetic energy now mass into velocity this is defined as linear momentum so we can say this is t square or 2 m t 2 times mass into kinetic energy Or therefore, linear momentum t is equal to square of this value, two m t. So this is the relation between linear momentum and the kinetic energy. So we have this equation. Now, from the Broglie equation. We have wavelength is equal to x by t momentum. Now p is equal to under root of two m, so this equals to x by two m t under root. That means if the kinetic energy of the substance is also given, then also we can define the wavelength. 
So we have to convert this linear momentum into kinetic energy. This is the relation between momentum and kinetic energy T. But E represents kinetic energy of the particle with a certain velocity having mass m. This is the problems we have done in terms of kinetic energy. Now, if the particle, so in this case, electron, if the electron which is moving around the nucleus with certain velocity v. is applied with some potential accelerated with a potential v that is potential then how we can convert this kinetic energy into potential difference so that is if the electron is accelerated v a potential V, then the kinetic energy of the electron, which is equal to E, this becomes E into V. This is the potential through which the electron is accelerated. This is electronic charge. Is E is equal to electronic charge, which is equal to 1.602 into the power minus 19 Coulomb. So, if the electron moving with certain velocity is accelerated with a potential of V volt, then the kinetic energy is expressed as E into voltage e is the electronic charge so therefore this kinetic energy can be replaced by this potential so therefore this wavelength lambda which is equal to h by p linear momentum which is equal to h by under root 2 m E. Now this E is equal to EV, so we can say this is H by under root 2 M E V. This is the potential through which electron is accelerated. So this is in terms of momentum, this is in terms of kinetic energy, this is also in terms of kinetic energy, but electron is accelerated to a certain voltage V now we also have a relation between absolute temperature and the kinetic energy that is average kinetic energy average kinetic energy is equal to half K T where this K is Boltzmann constant and this T is absolute temperature means temperature must be measured in terms of Kelvin scale so we have this kinetic energy which is equal to half of KT that is the average kinetic energy so we can replace this E by this average kinetic energy. So therefore, this wavelength, D progress wavelength lambda, which is equals to H by P, which is equals to H by 2m E under root. So E is equals to half kT. So therefore, this is H by half and will cancel out. So 
एम ए पी दिस ई इज इक्वल टू ईवी सो एच बाय अंडर रूल टू एम ई पी दिस इज द वेरियस फॉर्म्स ऑफ डी प्रोग्रेस इक्वेशन सो दिस सोर्स वेरिएशन ऑफ दिस वेब लेंथ विथ वेलोसिटी और दिस इक्वेशन सोर्स द वेरिएशन ऑफ दिस वेब लेंथ विथ कैनेटिक एनर्जी दिस सोर्स द वेरिएशन ऑफ वेब लेंथ विथ एब्सोल्यूट टेंपरेचर प्रोवाइडेड इज मास रिमेंस कांस्टेंट दिस इक्वेशन सोर्स द रिलेशन बिटवीन द वेब लेंथ ऑब्जर्व एंड द पोटेंशियल अप्लाइड so this is d broglie's wave length for electrons so for any sub atomic particles moving with some velocity it will have some linear momentum this will have some kinetic energy so all these particles moving with certain velocity will possess a wave length and that wave length is defined as d broglie's wave length this is equals to x So these are some of the modifications of the Broglie's equation, but the basic equation remains same. That is, h by m b, the uh, Planck's constant divided by linear momentum. So we express this momentum into various units in terms of kinetic energy, in terms of stopping potential, in terms of the temperature of the species. So we have this. D Broglie's equation says wave length is equal to h by m v mass into velocity. Now, one of the most important postulate of Bohr's theory says the angular momentum of electron. Should be some integral multiple of h by two pi. So the condition says m v r that is linear momentum, so angular momentum, which is equal to n h by two pi. So this is from Bohr's theory. Bohr's theory says if electron is moving in a particular orbit, that orbit has to satisfy. This angular momentum condition. So look at this. Combining these two, look at this. Two pi r is equal to n h by m v. This condition is n. This h by m v that is d Broglie's wave length h by linear momentum. So we say this is n into lambda. That means when an electron is moving in a circular orbit, you have an electron moving in a circular orbit around this nucleus. The circumference of the orbit will be some integral multiple of the d Broglie's wave length. This is circumference of circular orbit. So, the circumference of circular orbit is some integral multiple of the Broglie's wave length. It is quantized energy level. This can be one, two. This is that is. Circumference of circular orbit circumference of circular orbit is an Integral multiple of d Broglie wave length. 
So this is some of the important conclusions from the web nature of electrons. So this is the basic equation which we are going to use often for calculation. And these are some of the derivations that we require for solving subjective as well as objective type problems. Now, based on this, let's try to solve some problems. Now, how to use this? equations for solving problems. So this is an electron undergoes diffraction by crystals. So we have the electron which is undergoing diffraction by crystals. Question says at what potential should it be should a beam of electron be accelerated Such that its wavelength become becomes one fifty four picometer. So we have an electron. So this electron, at what potential this electron should be accelerated so that its wavelength become one fifty four. That means question says wavelength of electron is given as 154 picometer or 154 into 10 power minus 12 meter. That what is the potential to which this electron is to be accelerated? So we have an equation related to potential. So we have this. So use this equation. So wavelength is equal to h by to M E B. So squaring both sides, we have two M E B is equal to H by lambda square cos B is the square, so that is square is cancel out and it is rearrangement. So therefore the potential B is equal to H square divided by two M E whether this one so now putting the values v potential is equal to h is one 6.6 .6 into 34 minus 34 square mass of electron is 9.1 into 34 minus 31 kilogram e is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and velocity, uh, wavelength we have 154 into 10 power minus 12. 154 into 10 power minus 12. Square. So on solving this, we'll get potential and should in terms of voltage. So this is how we define the voltage. So person clearly says this is electron. So we have to consider the mass of electron and charge of electron. Second question. The wavelength of an electron is two hundred picometer. Find its kinetic energy. So we have an electron whose wavelength is two hundred picometer. Find its kinetic energy so we have 
the relation between kinetic energy and wave length. So wave length is equal to h by 2 m e where e is the kinetic energy, m is the mass, length constant, wave length. Now as it were taking is 4. <coughs> taking is 4. So we say 2 m e is equal to m is one by lambda is square. So therefore kinetic energy E is equal to m is square by 2 m lambda is square. Substituting the values of this 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 square 2 into mass of electron 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram wavelength 200 picometer square. So we have energy, so this must be in terms of G. So this is how we define kinetic energy from the de Broglie's wavelength, provided the substance is well mentioned that is known as electron for which we have to use the mass of electron. Number three. Compare the wavelength of a proton and an alpha particle under a potential difference of V volt. That means we have two different particles, alpha particle and proton. Now both are accelerated with V volt. Then what is the wavelength of this proton and alpha particle? So we have a voltage, we have a wavelength. So wavelength of proton is equal to H by 2 mass of proton charge of electron that is absolute value into d similarly wavelength of alpha particle is equals to h by 2 Mass of alpha particle E into V. Now, this is inversely related to mass. Now, taking this ratio, lambda P by lambda alpha, H, H will cancel out, EV, EV will cancel out, but this 2, 2 will cancel out, but this left is ratio of mass so mass of alpha particle divided by mass of proton so mass of alpha particle for every mass unit of alpha particle alpha particle is nothing but helium so mass of helium is for you so for you should be converted into gram so 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 gram divided by mass of proton is 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 24 gram. So this is approximately coming to be. So the ratio of wavelength of proton to the of alpha accelerated with same voltage B. So wavelength of proton is two times the wavelength of alpha particle.
question says compare wavelength of proton electron proton and electron moving with equal velocity with equal velocity so both proton electron is moving with equal velocity then we have to compare the wavelength associated with proton and electrons so as is look at is wavelength of proton that is h by mass of proton velocity wavelength of electron h by mass of electron and velocity now both are moving with equal velocity so therefore look at this we have lambda p by lambda e h will cancel out so we are left with mass of electron divided by mass of proton both are moving with equal velocity so v will cancel out f will cancel out so we are left with mass ratio mass of electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram mass of proton 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 kilogram so this is the ratio of wavelength. So both the particles are moving equal velocity. So but wavelength is inversely related to its mass. Then one more question. The wavelength of neutron. The wavelength of neutron at 300 k Kelvin is 400 picometers. So we have a neutron at 300 Kelvin whose wavelength is 400 picometers. Calculate wavelength of neutron at 1200 k. So we have wavelength versus temperature. So we have an equation. Wavelength is equal to h by under root m k t, where n is the mass of the neutron, t is constant, t is absolute temperature. H is a constant. We have neutron, so mass is constant, k itself is a constant. Therefore, lambda at 1200 divided by lambda at 300. So, this lambda is inversely related to square root of temperature. So, this is temperature 300 divided by 1200. Mass will cancel out, H will cancel out, K will cancel out, but we are left is the ratio of some constant into 1 by T. H by under root MK is a constant, so we must have a constant. So we have this inversely related to square root of temperature. So this becomes 4, that is equal to 1 by 2. So therefore, wavelength of this neutron at 1200k is equal to half of its wavelength at 300 so wavelength at 300 is 400 picometers so this is 400 picometer by 2 so that is 200 picometers so as a temperature you see this wavelength associated with this neutron also Decreases means wavelength and temperature is inversely related to each other. So these are some of the problems in which the different formulas that we have derived are used. So this is.
the dual nature of light is proposed sorry electron is proposed by d broglies now after this we have the uncertainty principle Heisenberg uncertainty principle now while discussing bohr's atomic model we said electrons are moving in a well defined circular orbit that was one of the most one of the most important postulates of bohr's theory so in an atom electrons are moving around this nucleus in a well defined circular orbit so when we use the term well defined circular orbit that means the trajectory of electron at any given instant can be exactly measured so the trajectory of electron is defined once we define the position and the momentum of electron so at any given instant according to bohr's theory electrons moving in a well defined circular orbit the trajectory of electron is well defined that is at any given instant the momentum of electron and the position of electron can be accurately defined so now bohr's theory was based on the particle nature of electron now according to this de broglie's these electrons shows dual property that is particle as well as wave property now when we say k we have a wave nature of electrons so this wave the well trajectory the trajectory of electron cannot be well defined that means at any given instant the momentum and the position of electron cannot be accurately simultaneously defined that means if we define the position accurately 100% accurate then while defining the momentum that give us some discrepancies that is some uncertainty some errors in measurement or when we measure the momentum 100% accurately then during measurement of position again there appears to be some uncertainties or errors so both momentum and the position cannot be determined simultaneously 100% accurately so if one is certain the other one becomes uncertain so this is so according to this uncertainty principle the position and momentum of electron cannot be determined accurately cannot be determined simultaneously and accurately at any instant that is if position is certain that means you are missing accurate value of position if position is certain then momentum is uncertain and vice versa so when we accurately measure the position the measurement of momentum becomes uncertain that is there is always error in measurement of the momentum or if the momentum is 100% accurate then there is again uncertainty in the measurement of 
the position of electron that is uncertainty the principle so according to this uncertainty principle delta x into delta p is greater than equal to h by 4 pi so that means delta x uncertainty in position delta p uncertainty in moment term so the product of uncertainty in position and the uncertainty in momentum of electron is either greater than h by 4 pi or equal to but this cannot be less than h by 4 pi so this equation delta x into delta p can also be written as of h cross h cross is nothing but h by 2 pi so h by 2 pi is sometimes written as h cross so this is the basic equation so at any given instant the product of uncertainties of position and momentum cannot be less than h by 4 pi it can be equal to or it should be greater than h by 4 so any value in which this two product is less than h by 2 4 pi is not acceptable that is according to this uncertainty principle now let's have some modification of this equation this is the basic equation now we have this momentum momentum is defined as mass into velocity so therefore uncertainty in momentum mass can be uncertain because mass is about the fixed quantity but while measuring velocity there appears to be some discrepancies or errors so we can say this is mass into uncertainty in the velocity uncertainty or errors in velocity so instead of this we can define it as mass into uncertainty in velocity so therefore delta x into delta p delta p is mass into uncertainty in velocity this is greater than equal to h by 4 pi or therefore look at this the product of uncertainty in position and uncertainty in the velocity is greater than equal to h by 4 pi m this is another modification this is uncertainty and momentum this is uncertainty and velocity now let's go for some other modifications also we define force force f is mass into acceleration and this acceleration is equals to change of velocity with time t the rate of variation of velocity with time time t is known as acceleration so therefore this can be written as force is equals to mass into delta v by delta t or the following it is force into delta t is equals to mass into delta v mass into delta v that is uncertainty in momentum so we replace this uncertainty in momentum by force into uncertainty time therefore we have this delta x into uncertainty in momentum is delta p that is m delta t so we replace this by f delta t so f delta t 
together equal to x by 4, 5. Now, force into distance, this is defined as energy, so this can be defined as uncertainty in measurement of energy into uncertainty in time is greater than equals to x by 4, 5. So, energy is force into distance x. So, therefore, uncertainty in energy is force into uncertainty in position. So, this is uncertainty is involved during measurement of energy and the time. Uncertainty during measurement of position and velocity. Uncertainty is during measurement of velocity and the sorry, position and momentum. So, simply saying, for any subatomic particles like electron, proton, neutrons, the exact location and the momentum cannot be defined 100% accurately simultaneously at any given instant. So, if one of the term is uncertain, the other becomes uncertain. If one is 100% accurately measured, the other is not accurate. So, this is uncertainty principle. So, that means, so we have this delta x into delta t greater than equals to x by 4 pi. If uncertainty in measurement is 0, if delta x is 0, means there is no error in measurement of position, then this and this something divided by 0 is undefined, so this delta p becomes infinite. So we define position 100% accurately. Then, while measuring this second quantity, this momentum, there is a very large uncertainty or errors in measurement. It means if one is zero, the other quantity is highly uncertain. That is the basis of uncertainty in principle, which was totally ignored by Bohr's theory. So, based on this, let's have some problems. Calculate the uncertainty velocity of a cricket ball of mass one fifty gram if delta x is So we say we have to define uncertainty in the velocity, mass is given, delta x is given, this is of the order of one x form. So therefore, look at this, we have this equation. Uncertainty <coughs> in position into uncertainty in velocity greater than equals to x by 4 by m. So therefore, delta v is greater than equals to x by 4 pi m into delta x. So that is that is 6.6 into 10 to power minus 34 4 pi is 3.14 mass is 150 gram. So this is in terms of standard units. So you have to convert this in terms of kilogram into 10 to the power minus 3 kilogram into angstrom that is 10 to the power minus 10 meter so that is uncertainty in velocity so uncertainty in position is extremely small 10 to the power minus 10 but this delta v becomes very highly uncertain
in an atom, electron is moving <coughs> with a speed of six hundred meter per second with an accuracy of with an accuracy of point zero zero five percent question says what is the stability with which the position of electron can be located means the position of electron can be located so we have question specified electron is moving with a speed of 600 meter per second but the accuracy is only 0.005 percent then what is the certainty that the electron can be located or certainty in position so question says Delta V certainty in velocity. This is 0.05 percent of 600. It's moving with velocity of 600 meter per second, but accuracy is only 0.005 percent. So the uncertainty in measurement of velocity is 0.005 percent of the speed. So this becomes 0.03. So this is meter per second. Now question says what is the uncertainty in position? So we have this relationship. Delta x is greater than or equal to x by 4 pi m delta v so therefore delta x h is 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule per second joule second 4 pi 3.14 mass of electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 this is 0, 0.0 this must be in terms of meter so electron moving with 600 meter per second is square with an accuracy of 0.005 percent the uncertainty or the certainty with which the position of electron can be located is this value Next question. The uncertainty for the calculation of the uncertainty for the calculation of ionic radius of lithium two plus ion. Of third orbit. Is zero point zero three per cent what will be the uncertainty in velocity? So we have lithium ion moving in third orbit and uncertainty 
for the measurement of adequacy is 0.03 percent and what is uncertainty in the measurement of the velocity so question says radius of lithium ion per orbit so we have equation from both radius the radius is equals to r naught that is both radius n square by z so therefore r p r naught n p square z admin number of lithium is 3 so we have okay, so this is 3 times r naught so we have p r naught is 0 0.529 and strong into 10 to the power minus 10 meter that is radius of third orbit of lithium plus 2 so therefore question says the uncertainty for the calculation of ionic radius radius means the position so therefore delta x is 0.03 percent of this value p into 0 0.529 into 10 to power minus 10 this is the uncertainty in the measurement of the radius of lithium in third orbit the question is what is the uncertainty in velocity so we have look at this therefore uncertainty in velocity is greater than equal to h by 4 pi m delta x by m is the mass of electron so therefore delta v is greater than equal to h is 6.6 .6 into 10 to power minus 34 divided by 4 into 3.14 mass of electron 9.1 into 10 to power minus 31 kilogram delta x we have this value we have 0.03 into 3 into 0 0.529 into 10 to the power minus 12. This is the uncertainty in the measurement of velocity meter per second. So this is how we apply uncertainty principle. So simply saying the position and the momentum cannot be defined accurately 100% at any given instant for subatomic particle. So if one of the quantity is 100% well defined, the other one becomes highly uncertain or measurement becomes highly erroneous. So both cannot be defined. So this concept, dual nature of electrons and the uncertainty principle has to be included for overcoming the demerits of Bose theory. So that will be discussed in next topic, next atomic model. So hopefully you enjoy the class. Thank you all.